Hi, everyone, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? Uh, ooh, actually terrible. Um, my life's been hectic lately. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to pretend it hasn't been. Yeah. But um, actually, the funny thing is I'm actually in good spirits, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, because specifically, like, things are just actually going really well in my life right now. Yeah. Yeah. You just I- said they're terrible, and then you said they're going really well. So which is it? Well, things are terrible, <laughs> but my life is going well. That's how, that's it's kind of funny. It's like 2020 yeah. and an amalgamation. It's like, like the circumstances around it might be terrible, but good things are happening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to let all of our listeners know, I actually got um, the opportunity to be an event manager at a local bar in yeah. town. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a re- it's really great news. And um, it's in line with things that you've been doing for the last eight years. Um, I know. Yeah. It's so crazy. And it's it just, yeah. I'm Definitely. really excited about it. Um, I'm happy for you. Thank you. Like, I'm happy for me, too. Uh, so, as always with our bonus episodes, we're going to be talking about season 13 of Drag Race, episode three. Yes. Yes. And this episode basically starts off with uh, the girls from the last group kind of coming in talking about how they you know they were happy that no one got eliminated and that they were kind of you know just wondering about the other group and so then we are introduced to the other group of girls who make their entrances into the workroom Mm -hmm. and um they are told about the mini challenge like the other group of girls were in the last episode absolutely so um (laughs) I think it's really interesting about this whole like we've had three episodes yeah. with nobody being eliminated. And I, I this Yeah, is... spoiler alert everyone, no one gets eliminated this episode. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> here's the thing though, and I get it, because like there's a lot of season one queens mm-hmm. who didn't get their time in the spotlight, who didn't get the five thousand dollar bookings, who didn't get to travel the world, who didn't get to be on work the world, who didn't get to be invited to Vegas. Like I and so this is kind of cool because like when you think about it. Uh, Denali in the first episode lost her lip sync, even mm-hmm. though she was wearing full ice skates. Yeah. Um, and that beautiful ponytail. Yeah. And so in this episode, which obviously we'll talk about later, uh, she really got to like show out. Yeah. In a way that will boost her booking from 2000 to oh, maybe for like sure. 4,000. Yeah. Which is like just because of one more episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People got to see a lot more of what these queens are capable of um, because of the way that they formatted this. And part of me thinks that maybe this had something to do with the fact that it was filmed during quarantine and they didn't want to like have a girl there for a week just to send her home. So they, they maybe extended the stay by doing this like triple premiere thing that they did. Um, but I think that it was a good way, like you said, of, of getting the audience acquainted with the girls. Yeah, they did a lot. I think they did a really great job with this. Now, once again, listeners, this is a podcast. Uh, <laughs> and um, this was very much a outfit episode yeah. all day long. Um, and also, there was a lot of kumbaya moments in this episode. There like, were. I, I mean, and that's fine. Like, everybody's like, I don't need my drag race to be tacky and confrontational the whole time. And and actually, this episode, I think, actually did make for good TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was, like, a lot of outfits, a lot of performances. And so the stuff that we're going to talk about are obviously going to be our impressions or, l- like, about some of the looks and whatever, trying to be real with you all. And then also maybe some of the inside drama for the episode. And so... Yes. Yeah. So the first so, part of the episode is like, what was the first challenge? So uh, it was a lady and the vamp are the two categories. So we have a light, girly, flirty runway for the lady portion, and then a vampy dark look for the vamp portion of the runway. Um, so up first was Denali. Denali. I. Um. I'll go first. I did not like it. I didn't. And I. I think it fit. I think with you're the high. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you smoking? I. I just didn't. I don't know, like, um, there's that's the other thing about subjective contests. Like, sometimes, even if the outfit is well executed, which it was, the hair was perfectly styled. The outfit was beautiful. I did like the left leg blue stuff that was on there, like the appliques as well. Mm-hmm. The shoes were also blue. Yes, I know I'm describing an outfit, listeners. Um, but the whole package itself was really put together, but I just didn't like it. I don't know why. I can't remember. You really, have like, no reason? <laughs> no, I just didn't like it. I Like, she walked out, I was like, oh, that fits, but... 
I don't know. I'm just not impressed with it. I don't know why. Maybe it just it wasn't your personal style. Maybe. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I thought it was a complete pass. Like, she she did great. Um, We'll go on to Kimura, even though she was late to the runway. That's something we didn't mention. So let's talk oh, about that a little bit before we go on to her look. Yeah. Because they're given, you know, a designated amount of time to get ready for these challenges. Right. And it is longer. Obviously, it's filmed for TV. Um, mm-hmm. And it is longer than they show you. It's not they like let on. 45 minutes. Like Because these are huge, dynamic costumes and outfits. Mm-hmm. Like, there's probably hours in between. And she was late. All I can imagine is the panic attack, the stress, the anxiety I would be experiencing in that moment if I were holding up the entire production. Yeah, and I and, and here's the thing though, what really sucks about this specific moment is like she did say later in the episode, we'll just say it now, that she only performs in drag roughly t- like maybe twice a month. Yeah. Yeah. And and the circumstances behind it are, you know, she's been with the same person for 8 oh, years. 8 years. Since she was 20. Yeah, and they and the person that she's with doesn't super love the drag aspect of Kamora Kim- Hall, mm-hmm. so she she said she had a, like a storage container that she keeps her drag yeah. in or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, she keeps separate everything separate. Yeah, that's and, sad, honestly. I it is sad. and I don't mean to like sound like like uh, oh I feel bad for her, you know, like to um, sound like I'm giving pity, but I just think that it's it's sad that um, in order to like enjoy something that you do you have to keep it separate from your partner you know yeah like how are you that just doesn't feel like survival to me i guess is the best way to say that uh so her look was the white one yeah so her looks were um for they were fine um (laughs) they they completed the assignment i think it's like what i said with elliot's looks it's like they were fashionable they looked good and they yeah they both were they fit the theme it was like for me it was like a b minus a little bit yeah um i don't mean that to be that harsh but it was kind of like a b minus i think i liked her lady look better than her vamp look her vamp look was just a simple little black dress i mean uh, it was obviously designer but it was like a little black dress with a cross i feel like she's in over her head honestly because even the makeup for both of the looks was not dynamic or really interesting by any means well she's not used to doing it in that short amount of time Right. She's she said five hours. Five hours. Which is when I first started drag too. Yeah, it took when I started roughly five hours yeah. to look terrible. And um she doesn't look bad. It's just mm-hmm. that um this is drag race. I mean, like this this is supposed to be dynamic makeup and crazy costumes and yeah. all that stuff. And you can do simplicity simplicity. Just it has to be leveled up a little bit. I just got a sense of anxiety and panic from her like this entire time. This mm-hmm. entire episode, which I think is unfortunate, but you know, I I think she's beautiful, and I think it does suck. I mean, f- we'll get to her critiques later. We'll get yeah. we'll get to her critiques later. So let's just say that. Um, I but yeah, her her looks during this mini challenge, she passed. So she passed. Good job. Good um, job. Yeah, she completed the assignment. Uh, Joey J. <sighs> um, for the lady, um, look, a chainmail, furry vest with. Yeah, no, I, I it lo- it would have looked great if the assignment was fall. It did look. Um, I actually agree with Don on this. The thing is, I actually really like this outfit, but like we said about Kamora, but the opposite. I don't think that it completed the assignment. Mm-mm. Like what? It, like what woman? Like in the sense of like like what? I I didn't get what the message was trying to be. Like, I guess that's... It looked like something my... I don't know. Like, I, something my mom would wear at a ski resort. But not chain mail. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, I, what? I, I know. I also don't really understand I, the... I, I loved the outfit. I just yeah. did not get the concept. Yeah, I because just... it was chain mail with, like, brown, f- like, kind of furry boots with, like, balls on them. No, it's so weird. I, do- I don't understand the I outfit. didn't get it. Um, yeah, it was a fail for me, especially for the lady look. The 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 vamp, I was like, you passed, like it, you fulfilled the assignment, like yeah. you did the you did the minimum. But <laughs> <laughs> you did the minimum. Yeah, the vamp look, I, I liked that uh she changed up and did the red hair with the black. I thought that was a oh, lot yes, better. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think it's good if you're gonna be using your natural hair to have like those sort of temper dyes on you where you can just like change up the color of your natural hair really fast. Yeah, absolutely. Rose. I loved both her looks. 
I was very impressed with, uh, so her lady look was like kind of the pop art thing that looked like it was oh, out of the Moschino. Right. And then mm-hmm. she had the, you didn't like her bag. The no, R. I hated the bag. And the bag mm-hmm. obviously fit for when she turned around and it spelled out her name. Mm-hmm. But um, the bag was just too, um, I don't know, like it was, it just felt really amateur. I don't know. It just the bag didn't feel, everything for me with that dress, because I love a dress, I saw it on, um, one of those fashion shows where they somebody hand like, painted, yeah, hand painted something mm-hmm. onto an outfit, and it was like high couture, and that's what it looked like for me. Like yeah. it was cool, it was kind of misshapen, and I loved that. Mm-hmm. But that bag was just like, oh, I'm just gonna like talk to my kid and get him to paint something, and so I can put mm-hmm. my like wallet in it. I don't know, it was weird. I didn't like yeah. the bag. Um, and then her vamp look was the thing that it looked like she had a lazy Susan on her head. It, I loved that look. <laughs> yeah, I, loved I have that no too. complaints. Everything I loved about that it was too. a win. It was very, it was very McQueen esque, like she said. Um, Tamisha Iman. I appreciated both her looks too. I um, enjoyed especially so that she had the white or no, the pink. Uh, oh, um, the that like that weird off red wine colored pantsuit thing. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. I loved that. I, but, and also it's like it, it was like parachute pants, and yes. I just I love that fitted pants from like the like that 80s time frame a little bit yeah like for women i by the way I, like i always say i love drag queens and pants like it's mm-hmm. my favorite thing in the world and she makes all of her own garments and that outfit was stunning beyond all reason it really was yeah and and the with the robe that hit the ground too mm-hmm. and was like stoned and sparkly it it looked great um i at first didn't really like the hair but i think you know the hair kind of it was fine for the look too I didn't, I, she didn't have to have a big updo for that look no i think that that it fit it definitely yeah. fit um i did not like um, the look. hair i didn't like the vamp look as much because like she's like she's like all of this is made of hair this is how much hair i use and whatever but the sleeves were not hair yeah and i thought for, that was a little odd it was it was like the breasts was hair the whole skirt was hair mm-hmm. and the sleeves were just regular fabric yeah and then yeah. i know that like the like uh the tummy reason was, I think, so fabric, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but and that was off to me. Yeah. It was just off to me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Utica next. Uh, I enjoyed Utica's looks. Uh, the plastic kind of ball look. It looked like her first look, her lady look, looked like it was made from like an unconventional materials challenge. Like it yeah. was something that they were they had to make in a matter of like a day and then mm-hmm. bring it onto the runway, uh, but I thought it was still it was quirky it was different I I mean she had like the little bubble guns on the runway with her too and then her vamp look was like the dark version of that look because it was like the balls were like scorched and kind of like around her in like this big yeah big disc thing she had hair that looked uh, kind of witchy like it was like in these two cones on the side mm-hmm. of her head and kind of like braided out. I, I enjoyed it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed both her looks. I think she has a very unique perspective. I, I was so confused by the first look. I actually, mm-hmm. I got lady from it more so than I did from Joey J. Yeah. Um, I got lady from it. I got like sixties, um, kind of vibe from it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, what was interesting is like, I, it was a very, um, arts and craft, kind of like outfit for me because like it looked like it was a store-bought dress that she put the balls on but Mm -hmm. her hair and her makeup Mm. which is what's different than some of the other contestants is like it was so drag like it was so like methodical Mm -hmm. that i was just like wow i am really enjoying the coordinating makeup with her looks yeah she she honestly turns the party she does especially because um like for the burnt look, like it was just like crushed balls and like it was, and they had black on, it was great. And you can tell that there's mm-hmm. a lot of time in between because those were fully different faces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, I would say, you know, yeah, Utica did great. I, really the only, the only person that I was kind of disappointed by, I mean, I would say that Kamara, she, she did the bear, she did what she was supposed to do, you know, and she looked pretty doing it uh makeup could have been better but uh overall the the look that i liked the least was probably joey j's lady look oh we didn't talk about denali's night look either the the scorched kind of ballerina look oh that was amazing i loved that i i thought mm-hmm. that the fabric for like should just been a little bit thicker because it felt like it was when she opened the jacket it felt like it was going to fall apart mm-hmm. so just a little bit of a 
thicker of that see-through fabric, and I would have just absolutely been head over heels. But the hair and the makeup were great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So good. So after they get done with this mini challenge, they then have to come up with verses and choreograph uh, to Phenomenon, just like they did for Congratulations in the last episode. Yeah, so... um. The episodes don't show them recording their lyrics because obviously the first time you hear them, will, it will be when they're in front of the judges. Yeah. And so there's three choreographers, which is Rose and uh, Denali. Denali and Joey J. Mm -hmm. And so the whole thing is just really kind of comical because what's happening is they're just not able to like really agree on all the movements. No. Um, per se. And like all of them are just offering suggestions. And I heard this line. This is the most Portland thing I've ever heard. And I think it was Joey Jed. Jo no, it was Rose who said it. Who mm -hmm. said, um, when she got a critique, I see that, but. And I was just like, <laughs> what? I and see that, but yeah. I was just like, wow. I was like, come on, come through, Portland. <laughs> being represented on Drag Race. Oh my goodness. I, I can't even. Yeah, it was really interesting watching them kind of have that, like, I don't know, <laughs> watching them st like step all over each other. It's like the true definition of like too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. They were just like, like Denali wanted to be the one that took the lead. And then Rose was not having any of that. And then yeah. Joey J's like, like, what about this? <laughs> so yeah, like it was, it was kind of a mess. And then you had the moments where Tamisha came in and she's like, this is what we need to do. Let's do this. Let's get on the same wavelength. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. let's see. <laughs> oh, and you can tell she likes choreo. Like, yeah. Cause she, she had it down, but Kimora just did not have the ability. Yeah. To dance Kimora at was all. not doing great at dance. And then Utica doesn't really have much of a dance background, but she was doing a good job. Oh, and, um, and I, I have to say too that Kamora, Kamora would have gone home oh, based on for sure. like you don't even know what happened necessarily um in the runway yet listeners mm -hmm. that we're talking about but from what I saw so far like they would have been so far on the bottom mainly because uh it's one of those things of where I feel like she's in over her head mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like way in over her head like she just doesn't have the ability to compete at the same level as the other entertainers yeah she was just having a lot of struggles during that choreography uh, portion it it definitely showed that she was not a dancer yeah it really really did it was kind of really disappointing to watch yeah. so the girls are getting ready and we learn that uh tamisha amon is the mother of tandy amon dupree uh the famous queen who falls from the ceiling in the in the viral video of her dressed as wonder woman in that pageant competition she was in yeah and that's seriously i watched that video constantly because mm -hmm. it's amazing oh it's iconic she did such a great job and mm -hmm. apparently um she uh died of aids at the yeah. age of 27 yeah um which is heartbreaking of course that is. um that's just such a really sad thing to but well and tamisha even made that comment that i mean it, it sounds like she's not the only one of her drag children to pass um since she started her house years ago. But Tamisha apparently has biological children that are does, like yeah. in their 20s, apparently. Over 30s, because uh, she said that my kids are older than all of you and Rose's 31. So. Oh my goodness. She has she biological has... kids. Yeah. Yeah. She said, how long has she been doing drag? 30 something years? Yeah. Something like that. She must have had kids young because she's only 49. Yeah. She's, yeah. 49. Gosh, that's an old age, actually, when you think about drag. And she looks good. Yeah. Real she does. Good oh my 49. gosh. Oh, yeah. We'll get to her runway. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're having those conversations. And then that's also kind of when we learn about uh, Kamora's situation. Um, we also learn at some point too that I, I think it, it might have been in touch that her family is not super supportive and right. doesn't know about her drag either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's got to be hard going into a competition, only doing drag twice a month, not having a supportive really family for it. And then also your partner is not super supportive of it either. Right. Right. Like you basically is your, your secret, your, your secret pleasure. And especially because it's something that she super seems to love to do. Yeah. Which is just heartbreaking to me, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we get to the challenge and Nicole Byers guest judging. Love Nicole Byers. She's yeah. so funny. She's hilarious. You got to see her here in Portland. Yes. She came to, oh, I was going to say Helium, but I'm not quite sure where she came to. Yeah. It's just super funny, talented, and just great. She's a good judge for this. Yeah, she is a good judge for this. Uh, so we got to see the performance, and and I'm not going to describe it to you, but I'm just going to say it's really like well thought out. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, comparatively, I remember when the choreography started for the last group's mm -hmm. uh, performance last week, and I was like, this is bad. I was like, oh, this is a train wreck. Because yeah. it was with Candy, and you know, she had that mess up moment. And then also, like, the I remember just the first two in that group got mick didn't wasn't super confident too and he, uh she was starting the song right, so right. it was like you know i i remember watching that performance last week and being like i'm not super impressed by this but this one immediately they start off with denali oh yeah and it's so good and she's like flipping and and doing all the tricks and yeah yeah and and killing it with the verse too like, oh killing it the with timing the verse. was great yeah. All the stunts. It was just mm -hmm. beautiful. It was so great. It was such a dynamic performance. It feels like an all stars Todrick Hall choreographed yeah. performance. Like it was super good. And obviously look for it on YouTube, listeners. It's so great. If I can find a copy, I'll link it on the website. But yeah, I just it was super dynamic and cool. Yeah. Joey was up after Denali too and also did really well. I liked the whole floor work move that she did with uh while she was wearing like the Metal Gear solid looking blue camo look. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. So um that was great. Uh uh Kamora's verse was the most cringy thing I've ever heard in my entire existence. <laughs> the whole time it was playing, I was just wanting to rip my face off so it was done. I can't even remember how it went, but it was like there was like one part when she was like I don't it was just weird the phrasing that she chose. I know. For, it was like something about her being the most glamorous or the most gorgeous I and it, yeah, I don't know. I was just like, "Oh girl." Oh gosh, it was so bad with that. I yeah. Just, and the and the the tempo and the rhythm was just just completely off yeah and it just and and also her outfit was um beautiful oh, it was but, beautiful but very um it's very bob mackie yeah but it was so simple mm -hmm. for a dance because i bet they said dance costumes all the rest of the girls are wearing mm -hmm. leotards and dance costumes and she's not wearing a dance costume she's wearing a dress that she's was wearing like, a yeah. dress yeah and i just feel like she pulled attention in a negative way in my opinion yeah i thought so too and that's the crazy thing is because like all the girls were really like hitting their choreography even in the background aside from her I the judges said that she looked lost during her performance when she was on stage doing oh, the background absolutely. moves which it, I mean yeah if you're not a natural dancer it, it can very much so look like that as uncomfortable as I'll get out mm -hmm. um, so uh, who else oh so Tamisha during the performance kind of got a little bit lost I feel like and I feel, I say lost in this sense, like she did her verse, her lip sync was on point, the dance costume was great, she mm -hmm. hit all of her moves, but she didn't do a stunt, she didn't, and I don't mean for her to do a stunt, I mean like, yeah. she, her part was just like, here's the words that I say, and now I'm done. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, like it was very right that. About. Um, Rose's was really dynamic. She did a really good job. Uh, I, uh, we got to see her vocal talent in her verse oh yeah yeah that so. was great that was good yeah utica oh utica's verse was actually really funny it was kind of silly like mm -hmm. her and it actually made fun of the fact that she can't dance yeah and her costume was dynamic and amazing yeah yeah i enjoyed her quite quite a lot this episode i th i think her fashion across the board had it was it was the most uh dynamic Right, and I I really appreciated what she what she brought to the stage. You know what's interesting is I I I really want so I think it was Evie Oddly who made a comment on Twitter somewhere that basically said, "Can we stop using the same de designers for every the same three designers yeah. for every season of mm -hmm. Drag Race?" And I really kind of agree with that because like it's it's it detaches what drag is locally versus what drag is and personally stage. yeah like because i think drag is a very personal story we're all very unique artistic queer individuals i think that you should have something that is representative of you and not something that uh maybe a fabulous designer made uh right. that doesn't really show your personality or your persona you know yes and i and i mean i know you can send that to the designer but yeah you can help design but that yeah, I agree. Like, make it more homegrown. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. I know somebody in the beginning, it's like, but didn't you just say, like, this is Drag Race, you should step it up? Like, in certain capacities, yes. Like, but in other capacities, like, like just give your design and then take it a little bit further. Like, you're going to, you know, you're going to be on national television. I just want to see authenticity, honestly, with yeah. a drag entertainer. I want to see an outfit that they absolutely love because it is something that they have 
pictured their, themselves in and they've pictured this like strong persona in. But uh, specifically speaking with Drag Race, I just I want to see these queens authentically represent themselves. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I fully agree. Um, so the ju- so the runway, which we haven't really talked about that. No, yet. we haven't really talked about the runway. Like, so it was sheer themed. Um, uh, hands down, the best dress belonged to Tamisha Iman. Yes, and Rue even said she's like, "This is the best dress <laughs> to maybe walk across this stage." Yeah, and it was like, and yeah. I know people are like, "It's just a gown with like a big bow with like f- ruffles," and I'm just like, "It fitted, was gorgeous, fitted to perfection, fitted to perfection, fitted and just kissed the ground." <laughs> and oh, so much the way that you kissed. could see her legs through that dress too, it was sexy. Like, the see the thing is, the top it it went all the way up to the neck, and it the Leaves covered all the way down to her wrists, but it was beautiful. But it was gorgeous. It it was the top of it was very classic and uh, fitted perfectly. And then the bottom, it was sheer. It was gold, and her makeup was impeccable. The hair was impeccable. It was so pretty. Yeah, she it was she looked stunning up there on. And that she stage. has a pageant smile. And I, by the way, yeah. I do love the pageant smile. The pageant smile is when you're doing your tea walk. Um, you smile real big for the judges and like you kind of like tilt your head a little bit and mm-hmm. whatever and her, her her pageant smile is gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it is. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Totally. The sucky thing about this episode though, actually no, we'll get that to get to that in a moment um what were some of you, who are you, some of your other favorites on the runway that night i really loved uh utica's main runway too it was very stevie nicks inspired and had like the scarves that were down the sleeves yeah mm-hmm. i i agreed i i liked the scarves down the sleeves i think it was just i like the different colors too it's just mm-hmm. really really dynamic in my opinion the watercolor makeup i thought looked neat yes I for her eyes mm-hmm. um i didn't love denali's outfit I I liked it. I I liked it because of the contrast between the light purple and the black. Yeah, I I, I could see that. Gosh, what is with the ponytails this season? Yeah, I yeah. Was thinking about that, like there must have been some sale I missed. And she <laughs> she wore one of those uh, anal bead looking ponytails. Yeah, she did. <laughs> um, I actually uh, I didn't like Kamora's look either for the runway. Really. Ooh, yeah, that was. A rough spot. I mean, the hair was. I I liked the the gown, the or whatever it was, the sheerness and the the um s- the sparkliness of the gown. Actually, maybe it was just like the her in the gown, and I know that sounds problematic, but it was like the hair, the hair and the weird. earrings were yeah. so much mm-hmm. that it made I felt like she was getting lost in that hair. Yes. Yeah. No. I felt and the earrings and the earrings. Yeah. It was like it was the hair was wearing her. And it, yes. th- see, the dress was great. Like I thought the dress looked great on her, but the the hair and the earrings kind of the styling for the outfit was off. It was. It was. Who was the one with the big ruffles? Was that Joey J or was that Rose? <laughs> that was Rose. Rose. So Rose's look was. I thought that that was very campy. I don't love the plastic on the blue plastic that was on the arms, like running down the arms. Yeah, but the whole thing, like I did, like the big, big like wrist like ruffles. I thought that was cool. It reminded me it kind of reminded me of uh Rockem Sakura's uh tool look. Everything? No. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> tool look that they wore when they had like the the big arm pieces. I think they had arm pieces on it. I can't really remember, but it was their tool runway. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Makes sense. But yeah, yeah. I I and then Joey J's little uh black poncho they were wearing I have so many of those sheer black leotards. Oh gosh. A sheer yeah. black leotard with the black poncho that went all the way down to the ground. And I think I think if that look hadn't gone all the way down to the ground, I would have been extremely disappointed by it. But because it it did hit the floor and was kind of dramatic, I was like, okay, you know what? This is this is good. Fulfilled the assignment. Yeah, yeah. It's not I I'm I wanna see so much more from her. I don't hate Joey J. I just want to see so much more from you. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, yeah. But so what I was going to say earlier, listeners, is that actually with the way the judges' critiques came down, um, the people who probably went in the bottom would probably have been Tamisha Iman and Kamora Hall. Yeah. Because they got a little lost in the performance and obviously all the stuff we said about Kamora. Um, but uh, Tamisha would have destroyed her in a lip sync. Oh, gosh. Yeah. She, <laughs> she totally yeah, would. She can't even move. No. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I... <laughs> Uh, 
so when it got towards the end of the episode, Rue obviously announces nobody's going home, and yeah. Tamora almost starts crying because yeah. she's like pretty sure it's her. Yeah. And she uh, then the top two of the week turn out to be Denali, Denali, and Rose. Yes. Um, and then they are to lip sync to "If You Seek Amy" by Britney Spears, which is one of my favorite songs. It's such a good song. Such I love that song. play on words. It's so good. And yeah. Rose, this was funny. Rose is like, I need this as my redemption because I lost my first lip sync, and then she lost. <laughs> <laughs> Denali eats her the fuck up. Oh yeah, like... Denali <laughs> does all the Denali does all the dance moves. She like... does the whole like duck walk thing, and then like the Vogue hands, and oh, then yeah. does like the like like arm sweep in front of the knee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like oh, yeah. I... it was. It Splits. was insane. Yeah, Denali ate that up. And then also even Denali brought some humor to some parts of the song too, even though she was really fierce during a lot of the dance parts. Yeah. She also brought some humor to it. This was her episode, honestly. I, I thought across the board her fashion was very good. Um, and her performance overall, you know, she showed that literally it was just those ice skates holding her back in that first episode. Oh, yeah, absolutely. She was so good in her heels. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um. So, like we said, Denali ends up winning the lip sync, um, getting her $5,000 coin. I have to say the one thing that I appreciate, um, because I know Rosé. So, Renee, Rosé is a part is part of Stephanie's child. She's mm-hmm. been on The Voice. She's traveled around the world doing drag. Mm-hmm. And this, is, this kills me about All Stars. And I said it in earlier episodes of our podcast. I hate when Rue is like, you'll get a $5,000 cash tip and no one... Like makes an expression about that. Like I could use five. I would die. Yeah, I need five thousand dollars. I need two thousand dollars. Government, where's that stimulus? Yeah, where's my stimulus check? Joe Biden, get in office now already. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Well, and actually, so when Denali said heard that, because obviously they're not. I mean, yes, they're a figure skater and they probably make lots of money. But when RuPaul's like five thousand dollars cash tip, like she was like literally beside herself about Mm -hmm. that. When Rose was like, "Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> i i'm having a hard time um deciding if i like rose or not out of drag outside of those eyebrows i feel like i i don't know what their personality is supposed to be doing yeah yeah she talks about i think it, it might have been during untucked but she's like everyone's kumbayaing and da 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 she's like but i didn't come here to make friends and you know like every girl's like that it is a competition and you should be in that mindset but I just feel like she has an idea of what her character is, but it doesn't always come through. Like, even so in, like, her entrance with, like, the blacked out tooth and mm-hmm. when there wasn't anyone else in the room to see it, she, like, took the tooth off. So, oh yeah, and, and then she described herself as, like, the Jim Carrey. Yeah, the, like, the Jim Carrey of drag. And I'm like, I don't really see that. Like, I don't see you being that f- funny. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I know. I just really appreciate the transformation they have. Yeah, from yeah, the transformation is like, great. It's insane. Yeah, like they look like a different person out of drag, but the personality in drag is just. I'm trying to like. I feel like they're doing made for TV personality, like yeah. what Ganja did, and I don't love that. Like she tried to come in with her own package mm-hmm. and of what she thought she was, and it's like not really translating. No, agreed. Yeah. yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah, I'm excited to see kind of how her story arc plays out. Um, do we want to talk about predictions for when the two teams meet up? Oh, um, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that's going to go for like the rest of the season? Do you think they're going to stick with these alliances that they've kind of formed in these two separate yeah, groups? Yeah, they've really formed alliances at this point. But yeah. I feel like Ru, the next episode will probably be a double elim- double elimination. I'm feeling that coming like a freight train. Yeah. Because they have way too many people on this cast. They do. I mean, we're three episodes in and no elimination. Shit, there's less girls on, on UK and there's they've already kind of gained more weight in the competition for UK and they're only one episode in. I know. It's crazy. I think that um, the person I want to win this whole competition after seeing that dress today was Tamisha. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I think that they are just stunning beyond all reason. She's a cancer survivor. Oh, yeah. She is legendary. Just legendary. She's just legendary. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love her. Um, I do really like Rosé in the sense of what they're providing. And also, I really like what Utica's providing to the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of girls that I'm just like, yeah, like, let's see what happens. And uh, I I think that Candy Muse will, like, go pretty far for good TV sake. Yeah. Um, 
from the other group. I I could see. I mean, Got Mick definitely. Got Mick. I think. I think as far as looks go, as far as the most unique unique looks go, it's going to be big competition between Got Mick and Utica. Oh yeah, I could see that. If this becomes a look show this season, then yeah, definitely it'll be Got Mick and Utica. Yeah, if they have more like construction uh, mm-hmm. challenges. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see these uh, queens do a construction outfit construction challenge. Oh, I want to see Tamisha make anything. Oh my god, same on this show. I just same. would be so down. It would be awful if tamisha got eliminated before there was like an outfit construction challenge i feel like they would would, rob us of that and i'd be so i'd be so upset (laughs) if that ends up happening yeah be so awful so um i don't really have any good predictions yet nobody's been eliminated we don't know really what direction the season's going Mm -hmm. you can kind of base it off of the winners but even that's been a little shaky and so i guess we'll just have to see yeah listeners. we'll just have to see i did get a little bit of a snippet of the preview for next week episode and it looks like they're going to uh next week be doing a hallmark themed parody interesting that's like they're supposed to be parodying hallmark movies but it's like rupaul mark is the yeah yeah oh good rupaul puts her name on everything so it's an acting challenge next week which i i enjoy the acting challenges they're usually very campy very uh goofy um and usually a look queen goes home during them (laughs) but this will be fun to see yeah yeah (laughs) so uh i look forward to next week and i look forward to seeing the two groups meet up and and combine yeah yeah so uh, um, we forgot to say, Donna, what are you wearing this evening? Oh, well, Coco, I'm wearing a pink chain mail because I wanted to <laughs> actually, I wanted it to go with the lady theme of, mm-hmm. of tonight's runway. And uh, it's just pink chain mail. And uh, there's also just uh, some diamond encrusted uh, little appliques for the nipples. So it, it looks like a, like kind of I'm nude, but it's chain mail that's just kind of cascading down me. Um, oh yeah yeah um i'm wearing um a dress made of all lilacs Mm. um i don't really like lilacs but (laughs) i really wanted to wear a dress made of all lilacs oh okay um is this a parody of denali's forget me nots dress (laughs) sort of but this is more this is more on the level of i just really wanted to steal from my neighbor's garden oh yeah and they had so many lilacs and so now i'm wearing them no, I love it. Um, I my allergies are acting up, uh, yeah. so we better <laughs> better end this episode quick. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for uh, tuning into our recap of this week's episode. We're going to be doing it every week and releasing these as bonus episodes. So check them out on Mondays is typically when they'll come out. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of a Gem of a Secret podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a J E M of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at ajemofasecretpod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.